Hi everyone, welcome to Educator HQ. Today we've got a fantastic guest on to talk to us about emotional connection. Her name is Robin Patworth from Play Improve Move and someone who I have worked alongside with and taken a lot, a lot of knowledge from over the years. So welcome Robin. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It's been many years. <laughs> It has been many years and I can tell you, if it wasn't for the school readiness funding in Victoria, um, there would have been a lot of families, a lot of children and educators that would just be climbing the walls. Thank you. Yeah, quite literally climbing the walls. Quite literally. <laughs> walls and fences and goodness knows yes. what else. <laughs> I feel like I'm constantly near gates and fences. <laughs> exactly. I, I felt like we constantly had you on speed dial. Oh, it was so good. It's so nice. And I'm so, as I've said so many times, I'm really excited for you guys. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank it's you. Because educators need this more now than ever. Like what a year, few years it's been. So Absolutely. And that's a really great segue to talk about, you know, the state of play in the sector at the moment. But I know that you really wanted to talk to us about emotional connection. Yeah, I just feel like even um, tonight I'm running a session on fundamental movement because most people know me, you're the, you know, I'm the movement lady, exercise physiologist, that's what I do. But our kids aren't even ready for that. <laughs> like the skills that I would have been doing in school readiness 10 years ago is nowhere near what we're at now. And that's okay. Like that's completely fine. Uh, the brain can learn. It's a powerful organ. It can learn at any time. But, yeah, we're just not ready to worry about gross motor, fine motor when we're not even connected with ourself and with our body. And it's been quite an interesting journey for our little ones in Melbourne specifically, um, also working with families in you know, London, similar situation. It's, it's stressful. It's been a real hard few years and it's now 2023. It's our time to bridge those neural pathways and, and help just connect the kids back again. And that's why it's such an important topic. I think also um, I'm getting more confident with sharing my journey as a trauma kid. I, I sort of kept that really pushed down for gosh, 20, 30 years. And it's now, well, I need to share a piece of me that's going to help other people and, and of course help the kids that we care for. So that's yeah, why absolutely. I'm and and exactly. I think I think even for educators, um, you know, we're talking about getting emotionally connected. I think educators are feeling that um, you know, for a long time we've been focusing wholly and solely on the children, but we've we're coming to learn that if we don't focus on ourselves and that whole thing, you know, put the oxygen mask on yourself. Yeah. Um yeah. that you know, you, you're not going to be able to help the children because you're not giving yourself 100%. So, And, of course, lots good. of us are in early childhood to save the world. That's why I came in. Like I want to right the wrongs of my childhood and I want to protect the children. You know, when someone wasn't protecting me, like that's yes. <laughs> a lot of us. Yes, I know I'm not the minority. It's just um, giving that vulnerability and be, saying, okay, it's okay that we're all human. Like I even had... An educator last week just say, you know, I took all of the self-regulation information that you gave me, but what I took out of that the most was that you said it's okay if I'm human sometimes and I need, like, you know, you see me playing with Play-Doh now, like I need that and it's okay if I need that because even though I'm a big adult, I'm still a human being that needs connection and, and self-regulation myself. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Emotional connection. What do we need to be thinking yeah. about? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I really think at the moment it's all about the vagus nerve. So I want to share a bit about what that is today. I'm still learning so much about it. So I'm still learning from lecturers in, in California mostly. Their research is so much better than us in Australia, but we'll get there. Um, the vagus nerve is an incredible nerve. It's a nerve that runs all the way from the cheekbones, back of the face, all the way down into the gut. It's what connects us to our autonomic nervous system. It's called our parasympathetic nervous system. And I feel like that's at the moment where a lot of us just aren't sitting well. You know, for example, we've been in this massive fight, flight, freeze area of uncertainty, like how much uncertainty have we all copped as a, as a country, as a world over the last few years. And we're just not connected with self. We're not connected with our own body. We're so busy, you know, are we able to see our friends for Christmas? Are we allowed to see our nan for their for her birthday? Like all this, you know, uncertainty has just put so much anxiety and stress on the body. And our adults, we've all felt it. And our children have felt it. 
our children have felt that anxiety in the house. And so it's the vagus nerve is a beautiful thing. If we stimulate the vagus nerve, it shuts fight, flight and freeze off. And it helps us to connect back to calm and feel calm again and, and feel safe and, and, and those sorts of beautiful things. That is, that is what we're aiming for, right? The tricky part with the vagus nerve, though, is you've actually got to stimulate it. And I think we have this community of screen kids. Um, it's something that I've been talking a lot about. And for myself, like even in remote learning, it was here, kids have an iPad, like or Phoebe was in kinder then and my other two were remote learning. So it's like, here, have this iPad. But it, for luckily for me, it came with boundaries. You know, I'm a therapist. I have boundaries for everything. <laughs> um, but for some families, this device, this addictive device was thrown into their space without the boundaries. So being on an iPad, we're not connected with our body. We're not stimulating that vagus nerve. We're connected to tech. Um, so that's where it's really important that we have these yucky conversations <laughs> and try and, well, what do we do about it now? So that's what I'd love yeah, to chat to you about today. Yeah, because yeah, I think awesome. all parents, you know, as a parent, we're all parents, yeah. all of us are parents yeah. here, and having, you know, someone tell us what, you know, is wrong sometimes hits a nerve. And I know having worked in the sector or well, in long day care for 15 years, you have to really um, carefully frame those conversations. And, and you know, hindsight's a great thing. Um, you know, it would have been great for some information to go out to families, for them to understand um, the, I guess, the downside of tech and, yeah. and screen time and promote more physical activity and things but you know it's hindsight isn't it so what can we do to you know have careful conversations with families because at the end of the day no parent wants to do the wrong thing no 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 you know and we want the best for our our children so so you know getting out there what is that thing and you know what are the ups and downs of of technology and how do we get our children especially in the early years in zero to five, that once they leave early childhood, once they leave um, kindergarten, what have we done to get them on the front foot? Like what have we done to set them up for success? So yeah. I think one thing that we sort of underestimated to, um, so the vagus nerve is stimulated when, for example, I, you'd know, we'd, we'd do it without meaning to, like we'd rub our ear or we'd, um, when I'm stressed, I sort of run my hands down my neck. <laughs> Like my hubby's always like, what are you doing with your neck? <laughs> and you're like, well, it's that's self-soothing. I'm soothing my vagus nerve naturally. Uh, vagus nerve is also when you want to like have a really big hug and you just come and grab something because we get this pressure in our, in our chest, imagining where this nerve comes. It comes all the way down into our gut. It's why children love to just swing upside down. You'll see kids on the monkey bars swinging upside down. You'll see children laying on the swing on their tummy, you know, swinging forwards and backwards. They're trying to stimulate all the front of their body and it's us knowing the importance of that and when I'm on an iPad I'm not stimulating those areas of the body you know I'm, I'm very texture tactile in my fingers and my thumbs but nothing in regards to the connection of, of my body and we can't feel our emotions if I can't connect with it and that's the trickiest part like I love zones of regulation please don't get me wrong zones of regulation is amazing but I can't put myself in you know yellow green red if I have no idea what I'm even feeling inside my body mm. and that's that real disconnect at the moment, you know, we often seeing, well, they just keep putting themselves on yellow. I'm like, yeah, because they're not understanding the concept. Like I've got to first get out of fight or flight. Cause when I'm in fight or flight, when my body's stressed and, and anxious, I'm too busy worrying about whatever the threat is. That threat could be the noise of the classroom. That threat could be someone's going to knock over my blocks. Like I'm so busy worrying about that. Yeah. I'm not connected with how I'm feeling and what I need. And so we have to firstly switch on the vagus nerve. And then the next sensation that we really have to work on is called interoception. I don't know if you've heard of interoception oh, before. Yeah. It was new to me. Yeah. <laughs> um, in lockdown, Phoebe, my youngest, she's now seven, but she's only just been able to have dry days with her toileting and she's seven. Because in lockdown, what I was finding was the same temperature of the house. Most of us had a temperature of a house of 22 degrees. We didn't put jackets on. We didn't need to go outside. We didn't put socks and shoes on. We didn't need to go outside. We didn't need to worry about holding our bladder until we get home. Like we didn't go, we didn't go out. 
toilets. So, you know, usually you tell your kids, oh, can you just wait, you know, five minutes until we get, no, the toilet is just there and I could use it anytime I needed to. Same with snacking. Like it wasn't, am I hungry? Am I full? It was just, oh, I'm bored. Let's just keep eating. I, I, I did that. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I've only and just re- I've only just recovered from that getting back into my pre-COVID genes, Robin. So I know very it's so well. excited for you, but I haven't got back to that yet. <laughs> <laughs> you can see, like we didn't connect with self. We didn't connect with our body Absolutely. to know what it needed. We All just COVID was an out of body experience yes. in Victoria for two years. <laughs> yes. I'm telling yeah. you, it was oh, yes. And what yeah. I know, like you know, now I love you're in sunny Brisbane. Lucky you. Um, the difference in children because I come to Queensland a lot and see the children in Queensland and then the children in Melbourne and the difference. It's scary. There's a difference there, and, and there's a burnout there for children and adults. Like we're all still in that fight or flight unless you actively make an op- a choice to connect with your vagus nerve, parasympathetic nervous system, interoception. Mm-hmm. You've got to make that choice now to connect with that. And that's why I could come here and talk to you about crossing the midline and spatial awareness, and I'd love to, but I don't even want to worry families, kids about mm-hmm. that because we're just setting them up for stress. I'd rather just yeah. now let's get calm, let's get connected. Mm-hmm. So um, with with that feeling, Robin, you know that you know how you get that feeling in your chest, mm, and you you know you you might be holding something in, or you want to let something out, or or whatever it is. Is that mm. that is that the culmination, like of that anxiety? That mm, so yeah. the sympathetic nervous system. You got an auto, so autonomic nervous system has two branches: sympathetic, which is fight or flight; parasympathetic, which is like rest, relax, calm. It's also digestion. Like if you notice when you've got that really gut instinct, someone's like, are you hungry? No, nah, I'm not hungry. Or I'm over hungry or I overeat. So it's yeah. that fight or flight, that feeling in that chest, that rapid heart rate, you know, when your heart rate comes up and your fists start to get frustrated, mm. you get hot, like your temperature comes up. That's fight or flight. And that's where a lot of our little ones are. Like they're sitting in that fight or flight, especially with separation anxiety. That's been huge this year. Um, because we are we're we're nervous of our environment you know we're not used to being in a social environment and all of a sudden we you know chuck 25 kids together when they've been at home (laughs) by themselves yeah Yeah, so it's that that tightness and that elevated heart rate that we gotta use play that's why play is so beautiful use play to drop that to bring the body back to connection that's yeah that's that's what we're trying to do at the moment yeah and and then i think as educators play is the most important (laughs) yeah yeah. especially in the the first five years absolutely you know um children need to learn to do play more with each other it's social it's you know Mm. emotional it's it's all those language and communications it's trying to connect you know and it's not just you know there it's outdoors if they can get outdoors indoors we know if what suits each child at how they behave so you know we we accommodate that so we do you know a range of indoor outdoor play which um, it's, yeah, play is the most important before actually going to the next stage of education. Mm. And, and I think, ed- I think too, with educators, they get overwhelmed with the curriculum yeah. and forget that everything you can learn through play. play. And it's that yeah. word through. through. That, just let them play and then <laughs> take what they do and understand the curriculum from their eyes, their not eyes. from our, our eyes. We can understand and observe what they're doing and and add it to what that what they want to do. I think mm. uh, there's so much compl- complexity and they, and educators. You know, um, it's it's complicated for a lot of educators, and I think there's a lot of bells and whistles now on how um, people are. You know, especially um, managers expect uh the curriculum or expect program yeah. planning to be done it really just needs to be taken back to basics but back to back to that feeling yeah. you know it's educators too mm, educators yes, can yes, can yeah. learn a lot from mm. the release of that through play by playing themselves yes you know, and i think if you look at the staff up, room you get yeah. hung up on taking oh, photos documenting everything 
play with the children, right. remember yeah. what it is they're doing, and it'll all come in your programming instead of trying to fit so much into boxes. Yes, and I think if you look at yeah. a staff room, how stark are some staff rooms? Oh. Like there's no play in a staff room. Like even if they just oh. had a mindful colouring book at the table with a mandala, some pencils. Yeah. Just allow people to connect with art, with music in the staff room, yeah. with put a hammock in the staff room. You'll find every person wants that hammock. Yeah. My, I'd, I'd be happy with a swing. Swing, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because if you think about it, when we even when we're on a hammock, like we're usually mm-hmm. in fetal position, we'll usually like tuck our, our knees up, and it's that pressure. That's the vagus nerve. Like even just doing that, it's like vagus nerve is it's stimulating and. But we don't do that for our adults. It's like we think we don't have to. Well, we do because well, we, we do. do. We, we do. End, do. We do end up in the fetal position. Yes. <laughs> yes. We, even, we do. Even, even adults can play, but obviously mm. appropriate. It, it doesn't stop. You know, it, when you're young. It's still, yeah. It's well, still, we had we had we art had we had art therapist on last yeah. week. Love to saying you know you don't have to be an artist to do art therapy no, that it's exactly. about expression and expression. about getting all of that that's in here mm. out so yeah. then you know you've you've got a better sense of self so i did pub choir last night with some friends and i can assure you i cannot sing oh. <laughs> exactly Even like if you think when we're singing like vibration in the vagus nerve one mm. of the simplest strategies i give kids is to buzz like a bee can you buzz Oh, there you vibration. go. Vibration. Like it's all vibration. Really I'm like a sensory tool, but I don't need anything. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that's the thing. Yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> Having a toolbox of things that are free. Yeah. Yeah. And it's on your body. Like singing's on free. Your body. Dancing's free. Yeah, humming. Jumping, everything's free. Mm. Yeah, humming. Just hum. Hum, hum. their favourite song. If Bluey's their favourite song, we hum the Bluey. Thing. Yeah. But my son yeah, My son was yeah. a hummer. Or he uh, still is, my son you know. is a hummer. Yeah. Isn't yeah. It? So they're self-soothing. And I think we can sometimes overcomplicate things. Like we don't need to worry about letters and numbers yet. We just need to connect with ourselves and know what's appropriate. Like this is where it's been really interesting. I, I think when with the years that we've had, I already had a toolkit because, you know, coming from childhood trauma, I've been very lucky to be surrounded by beautiful therapists that gave me a toolkit for how I get through the day of, of having anxiety. I had that toolkit coming into these really stressful years that we've had. But I know families that had, n- had never had adversity before, no adversity. This came out of nowhere and they had no basis to connect to their body to get through anxiety to get through, you know, overwhelm. So I think it's really important that we give people such simple things like that. Like I was, I was a clarinet player and you can imagine now like why, why that was, I was self-soothing with my clarinet. Yeah. Yeah, Right. Every day it's through breath. It's through the vibration in the mouth. It's even through the weight of the clarinet, you know, that's called proprioception, the weight of an instrument. And so we back then had these outlets to self-soothe this little guy here is not a self-soothing device. That's this the is opposite. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. The opposite. And this is sort of the the tricky part we're in. And this is where you can see staff, and I see them go into the staff room to have a break, and it's great. You need a break, but this is not a break. Like if there's anything else you could pick as a break, like if it's I roll Play-Doh all the time. If it's not Play-Doh, it's blue tack. If it's not blue tack, it's twirling a pen. Like my hands are constantly going. Like, and if that's what you've got to do when you get into the that staff room, like pin that to make us funny. Your toy. This is my. This is my thing. Ah, spinning top. Yeah, I, I'm a spinner, but it makes too much noise, so I do that while uh, I'm working. But play yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm holding my own hands like it's a, yes, <laughs> yeah, and that's what we do, right? Yeah. And it's funny. I'll always, you know, talk about the brain and and the vagus nerve and and then everyone will like stop playing with their ear. I'm like, no, 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 play with your earrings, play with your ear. That is how you've learnt to self-soothe. Our job as educators is to teach children now what they could do to self-soothe. Yeah, Yeah, giving them an option. Like even, and we do that through mirror neurons. Like, you know, I play with my earring, usually you would play with yours and children will copy us. So it's not even like we have to tell the child, now today we're going to rub our cheekbone. No, just (laughs) we do it and the children will mirror us. That's how they learn, through copying us. Mm. So it's trying to connect first. Don't worry about the curriculum. Don't worry about the programming. Connection first. We're human first. Then we can play and learn and, you know, all those things. But I think at the moment we're just all very disconnected. Yeah. 
That's great. Yeah. Well, Robin, right. that was fantastic it was chatting to us about that. And it, I think that snippet of information has had. That's amazing. Yeah. I, I'm like, I've learned, I've learned so much from that and I've known you for, for years. So it's, yeah. I, we really hope that educators watch this and have got something out of it. And, um, you know, I, if you're in Queensland, the Kindy Uplift program, in Victoria, the school readiness program, you know, we used Robin through our flexible support funding. Head over to Play, Move, Improve. Follow Robin on Instagram, um, on social media. If you need help, reach out because I can tell you I can vouch 100% and so can my, I don't know how many educators over the time, but Wow. Lots of educators, lots of children, lots of families could all give uh, Robin the five star thumbs up because she's been fantastic. And Thank you. Thank you. we would love to have you on again to have a yes, chat please. to us because I think these chats are really important and for our for our sector. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If anyone has any questions, so if you find someone has a question they want that answered, we'll just yeah, go with what you want to know. I just wanted to preach that a little bit <laughs> to start with because I think it's really important right now that we just connect. So yeah. we have to do yeah. the foundation. We're not robots. A lot of things are turning, Basics. you know, robots, AI, oh, all of this is AI. coming in, but but not to five. Like that will never be replaced with connection and, and those important foundations. So I think it's really important. Absolutely. Definitely. Well, thank you so much for having me, Shirley and Tamika. It's been awesome. Thank you, Robin. Enjoy your podcast. I'm so excited to listen to the next episodes and be a part of it. So thank you. Thanks for Excellent. having me. Thank you. Thanks. Bye for now, Bye. everyone. Bye, everyone.